when you start kind of thinking about authorization and when authorization starts to become you know complex right the kinds of problems that you confront with that we don't have direct answers for although there are many different ways of achieving it would be things like um you know do should i be using hustler roles and do that does that map one on one to one to application roles or is my notion of application roles a little bit different right what is a role versus what is the scope right um so you know a user can have one role at a time in general that's kind of you know having a role but that one role itself has many scopes right um you have things like hierarch hierarchical modeling right where you have resources um but the resources kind of belong to parents that belong to parents right um for example a file sharing kind of system right where files have folders that have folders right um and then there's kind of an inheritance that happens there but but the same hierarchy also happens across other dimensions for example very and most commonly you'll have users teams and organizations right not just users but you have a user user belongs to a team team belongs to an organization and it could be kind of many to many across all of them right one user could have many teams um one team could be many organizations right it can be it can be as uh, weird as you want it to be but there is a hierarchy there right uh, and then of course it's not just that this hierarchy is, is kind of important but there's also specific overrides for example there's a specificity right there's a specificity to users or more specific than teams right the teams that are more specific than others or folders a permission on a folder is more specific than the permission on its parent folder right or the inheriting the permission is a little more specific and then of course you can combine in other rules as well that can happen dynamically maybe you have a generic block list or a denial list right um or you have specific flags on the resource like is visible is false or is public is false or hidden is true right so when we're going to think about all of these different kinds of things um uh, what what uh, what i started working on um uh, and i'm going to show you kind of a quick preview now is is putting together a guide to start thinking about this easily right so so let's take a google drive kind of example right and then we kind of start to flesh that out um but in this scenario we have users and teams right users can have access to folders team can have access to folders users will inherit permissions from their team but specific permissions for a folder for a user will override that right um folders themselves have parent folders um and folders will inherit inherit permissions from parents or grandparents or ancestors important people will oops i think i was um, um and then we have and then we have uh you know again the same kind of specificity where specific permissions of folder can override the parent folder permissions right um so let's kind of take a look at what that um what that kind of looks like to a um just so after that run here hopefully folks can see all right i was on a bit of a time crunch to come up with a good folder hierarchy um and i have no idea why but this is kind of what i came up with there is a design project and the design project is for a house and there's an indoors and an outdoors to the house and the indoors also happens to have a kitchen so that's kind of my folder hierarchy right um i have a design project folder right like maybe i'm an architect and i have a house that i'm working on and that house then has an indoors and an outdoors and the indoors also has a kitchen so like that's kind of the folder hierarchy where i'm going to be putting in different plans right um so so there's kind of a folder hierarchy there and if i have access to kind of a parent folder i get access to the children right unless there's an override so that's kind of one piece of this model right that we're looking at here um uh and um uh, and then i can kind of start granting access to specific kind of teams and users right so let's take a look at what kind of teams and users look like um right so uh, we have teams um and so there are uh, there are multiple teams um there are multiple users each user can have access to specific folder but then there are also teams teams can also have access to folders um and um and then users belong to teams right so we have to have kind of modeling to capture that piece right um and then we we'll assign specific permissions to people to see how that kind of come together um and so again that's kind of pretty straightforward to capture what you do is you would have let's say um i have a team and i have a user right and then i have a user underscore team which contains the mapping of you know, which user belongs to which team right um and so let's kind of start pottering about with permissions so first you know we have kind of folder here um and let's let's the the way that the way in this model 
that especially given the amount of complexity that we have in kind of different kinds of combinations and tools and things, right? What I really want to do is when I, as a user, I'm accessing this folder, right? What I want to be able to enforce is a very simple concept is to say, this folder probably has a list of allowed users. How that list of allowed users comes together is complicated. But let's treat that as a black box for a second. I have a folder. This folder is going to have allowed users. And if that list of allowed users for this folder contains the current user, I get access to it, right? Um, that's that's it, right? As if it was a flat access control list, right? There was an access control list somewhere that had folder ID, user ID, and I could just reference that, look that up, and enforce a permission, right? So that that's kind of the first thing that I want to do to kind of enable permissions on the on this folder model, right? Um, and so what I've done here is I've set up a permission for a user, right? Um, and and I've set up a relationship to a permissions table, which is kind of this access control list table, right? And this access control list table somehow contains the right users that can access a particular folder. I don't know. If we'll go into how that kind of system was created, but assuming that that system exists, this access control works, right? So just to kind of try that out maximum to see where this permissions table is, I'll show you where this permissions table is. This is kind of that access control list, right? This is not written by hand. This is computed from folder hierarchy and team hierarchy and user specific things. We'll ignore how it came together, but somehow it's come together and I have access to folders and users, right? So it says folder one is accessible by user one, so on and so forth, right? Um, so let's just go ahead and add in a quick example here to see what that looks like. So let's go to permission folder user. This contains the user specific permissions for a folder. So let's insert um, the outdoor thing. So let me see what the outdoor uh, folder is called. So that's folder number four. So let's give access to folder number four, right? Um, to user ID three, um, right? So let me just quickly go ahead and create a user first. I don't know if I have a user ID two. Let's add a new user three. All right, so I'm creating a new user for user three. And for this user three, I'm giving them access to folder number four, right? I give access to this user uh, for this particular folder, and now I have access, right? So somehow we kind of computed that, flattened that out into our access control list. Our access control list now contains this permission. And so I, I now have access to this particular entity, right? Um, and very similarly, right? If I have a team and that team has access to a different folder, um, and the user belongs to the team, I'll give that access again. So let's just take a look at that in action before we kind of take a quick look at how that comes together, right? Um, so for example, I have a team and team two um, has access to folder three, right? Um, so that's kind of something that I've already set up. Team two has access to folder three. Just to take a look at what that looks like, um, let's go to the folder here and see what that really means. So team two has access to folder three. So that means team two is going to see the indoors folder, right? And indoors also has a kitchen. The kitchen is usually indoors. We have an outdoors kitchen. Um, and so I have an indoors kitchen here. And so if I if this team can access indoors, this team can also access kitchen. So let's go and enable that team for this particular user, right? Which is kind of what a typical collaborative action would be. So I kind of go in here and I say, well, user ID three, you belong to team two. And team two is my indoors team, right? Um, and so let's go ahead and check that out now. And you'll see that now I get access to outdoors, but also indoors and kitchen, right? I didn't give this user an access to both of these folders. I gave the user access just to the team. The team had access only to the parent folder. And because of that, everything kind of got computed, right? And then similarly, overrides can be computed as well. So, so that's kind of the that's kind of the model. Um, I'll be writing up a kind of a detailed post on how this works, but the the kind of core of this idea is really simple. The core of the idea is that what we really want to do, right, is we want to get to a place where we want to have a flattened list that is somehow computed, right? We have a flattened list of folders, users, um, and access types, right, that are kind of kind of computed, right? Um, and so I can dec decide whether I have access to a particular resource or not. Uh, and what we do here is that we construct this using a view and that view can then kind of compose different pieces of this, right? Um, and so I won't go into too much detail here, but to kind of just show you the, what this view looks like and what an example extension of this looks like is. Oh, let me just go ahead and show you. 
So what this view does is that it kind of flattens the folder. So it looks at all of the ancestors um, and then adds up, coalesces those permissions. It also does a lookup on the user and team structure, coalesces those permissions and then unions that coalesces slash unions that into one piece that then gives us a very flat tool. This folder ID, comma, this user ID, true, false, right? That's what we get. The nice thing about this structure is that it's super extensible. This style of thinking is really easy to extend. For example, suppose in the future, I had to add this really kind of weird complicated feature, which is um, the folder can have a blacklist, right? Or can have a block list and, and, and it can have like, uh, I can, some, ad, some admin can go in and just say, this user, this folder, not allowed. Right? I don't care what your hierarchy is. You're just kind of blocked from accessing this particular folder, right? Um, and so what I can do is easily extend that by capturing a folder ID, by using something like an accept, capturing for unioning that, adding it to the same view. I can add this other condition as well to say, if it's as long as it's also not in folder common user from the block list, right? So I can have a block list table and then I can, and I can add that as well to my query to get the final result, right? So um, this pattern is pretty generic um, and um, I'll do a write-up and we'll share kind of what that looks like, uh, but this should kind of allow you to start to extend this in really kind of complicated hierarchical ways um, and can be as dynamic as you want it to be. You can add multiple levels, teams, users, orgs, whatever, right? And you can, can keep incrementally adding that as well. Um, so that is what this piece looks like. Um, and uh, once we have a write-up, I'll share that with you folks. Uh, let me just see if there's any proof questions here. All right. Uh, cool. So that is what this piece uh, looks like. In the generic, the, the super kind of general pattern that emerges here is pretty, is, is pretty straightforward, right? The idea is to just say that, you know, I have models, the model has a ACL table. The ACL table is not actually a table, it's a computer. Um, and the permission rule is now really simple, right? This is not what you always have to do. This is nice to do when systems start to get really complicated, but you can always mix and match, right? You can always boolean that with other things that you have. So uh, we'll kind of write this up and we'll share that across, including this presentation and the sample application as well. Um, so that you folks can start kind of using, using that and referencing that in their applications. Mm -hmm.